Man, I don't know this guy from Adams, to be honest, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a friend of a friend of, you know, and he came on and he started posting all this crap all over the place. And I was just like tired of having to delete his crap from my wall. Because I have a very zero tolerance for people who post crap on my wall. Yeah. And, and I was just like tired of tidying up after him. And so I just said, you know what, the easiest way to deal with a guy like that is delete him. Right? So I find it very interesting that he's now in the chat room, right? And you know what? I have a theory on this. Mm -hmm. He's a Christian. Yeah. And Christians don't think like Jews, right? Like a Jew, you delete them and they get like all offended and it's like, fuck you, you never see them again, right? Right. Like Italians are like right. that too, right? right. Um, and it's like, oh, what do you do to me, you know? And so like, if I got deleted or blocked by somebody, the last places I'm going to appear is in the watching their stupid show. I'm like done with the person. They don't exist anymore. But a Christian doesn't run away because they grew up with turn the other cheek. Yeah. You know about that. You grew up as a yeah. Christian. Yeah. So it's turn the other cheek. So I can shit all over you, right? And I can, I can talk trash about Levy all the time. And he's just like, you know, he sits there and he goes, you know, I've been through lots of therapy and I can handle it. So I just keep calling him like a heretic and all these things. And it's just like, it doesn't like internalize. You don't get, you don't feel any of it. You don't care because you, you know, you just like turn the other cheek. And, and you know who does that else? You know who else does that? Amongst frummies? You know what group does that? Lubavitch. Huh. I can post so much stuff that's anti Lubavitch on my MySpace, on my on my right. essays, right. you know, right. in Facebook. Right. I can like right. go off on Lubavitch right. all the time and there's plenty of reasons to go off on them. You know, we did like a whole thing here with the right. Ten Commandments of Chabad. Remember we did that? Yeah. The next day all my Lubavitch friends are right back. It's like they have no problem with that. Like they don't they don't care because they just turn the other cheek. Lubavitchers turn the cheek, you know, and maybe there's like a, a parallel there because just like, you know, the Christians follow their dead rabbi, you know, the Lubavitchers follow their dead messiah too, you know, who knows? I don't know, like maybe there's a lot of parallels, but I just, something I've noticed is that you can, you can, tra they're fun to trash, you can trash the crap out of Lubavitchers and just, they just bounce back, they're like, they're like that bozo clown when you were a kid, right? You pound the hell out of Bozo, but Bozo keeps coming back with a smile, you know? And he, boom, and you hit him again, and whoop! And he, yeah, that's Lubavitch, that's Christians, I love them, you know? It's not quite the same way when, like, you, you, you trash somebody else in, in the from world, right? Yeah. Like, don't go into Asia Torah and smash somebody, you know, like that, and expect them to just bounce back and go, Hey, lady, come on in, have a seat with us. Yeah, we love porn here. Tell us all about it, you know, tell us about Kimberly, whatever her name was. Right? Cummings. Okay, thanks for talking. That wasn't a real name. Really? <laughs> okay. What do you got next? This week's Pasha is Mishpatim. Mm, I got another thing. One last thing. Okay, great. Um, go ahead. Do you want me to do that? Yes. I was asking if you had anything else. No, I want you to Okay. Do. One last thing from last week. What? Uh, it's been an hour already. We're doing pretty good here, huh? Yeah. We're really yarning it out. <laughs> yarning it out. Um... We're doing good? Yep. Okay. Um, great. So, based on something that we had a conversation last week, uh, I, I, I uh, wanted to uh, delve into it a little more this week. And that is that we talk about the principles of faith. The Rambam has 13 principles of faith, and, and it's widely accepted in the Torah world that the violation of any one of those 13 constitutes heresy. Because these are like the core principles of Judaism. And we have to accept those 13. And some people actually articulate them every morning by davening. Some people have that in minhag. They will actually say, as part of their morning tefillah, they will say these 13 principles of faith. One of those 13 is number 8. And it goes, I believe with a perfect faith that the entire Torah that we now have is that which was given to Moses. Everything in the Torah today is that which was given to Moses. Meaning, Moses was on Mount Sinai. God told him the entire oral Torah, everything in the Torah. Moses passed that down to the generation in the desert. They passed it down to their kids, who passed it down to their kids, who passed it down to their kids. 
and it went generation to generation, and that which we have today is that which was told to Moses on Mount Sinai. And when commentators write down which that which they were taught from their previous generation, that is the oral Torah, and understanding that it doesn't come out of, Ra of Rashi's ass. That Rashi doesn't just pull things out of his ass. Tosfos doesn't pull things out of his ass. They write down what it is that they were taught, that has been taught from generation to generation. We must understand that that Masorah, that Torah tradition, is a core principle of Judaism that we must understand and we must accept that that is the same thing that Moses taught us. Rashi is writing down that which Moses taught us. And nothing came out of Rashi's behind. So when you say, oh, I don't need to agree with Rashi. Rashi was wrong. I don't have, I don't have, he just, that's just man-made stuff. That is a violation of one of the core principles of Judaism. Because you must, as a Jew, you must accept with a perfect faith that that which Rashi wrote down is that which was given to Moses. So I'd suggest that people read a terrific book called The Limits of Orthodox Theology by Mark B. Shapiro. And uh, I've got some great interviews with him on, on my, my blog. So the idea that the Rambam's eighth principle applies to the entire corpus of Torah from Rashi and the Shulchan Arug to the, to the Talmud uh, to the five books of Moses, I think is a little stretch. I think the Rambam's clearly talking about the five books of Moses, he's not talking about himself and Ibn Ezra. Uh, just to give some examples, the Rambam says that the, the, the Gemara is wrong when it imputes that the stars have, have power to, to affect people's lives, and when the Talmudic rabbis believe in the efficacy of astrology, according to the Rambam, they're getting it wrong. Like the Rambam and the Ramban disagree, and Rashi disagrees with Ibn Ezra and vice versa. And, uh, I mean, are you saying that all these great commentators didn't, didn't make mistakes? No, that's not at all what I'm saying. Well, let's, let's, let's attack that one piece at a time. First of all, I don't care what a, what a rabbi named Mark says. Let me tell you something. Let's, let's start there. Let's start there, right? When I, am, I tend to dismiss anything that comes from somebody who calls himself a rabbi and then uses some Goyesha name that's found in the Christian Bible, such as Mark or Luke. <laughs> Let, let's talk about Luke. You know, Luke, I can give you some leeway here. But first of all, you, you're not guilty of this at all for, for, for a number of reasons. You made a big point early on, like six months ago when we started doing these, that you want to be called Levi ben Abraham. And I've tried valiantly to always call you Levi. Do I not? Yes. I respect that because you've immersed yourself. You've literally taken a mikvah. You've worked for that. You've, you've immersed yourself in Judaism and you want to remove yourself from Luke, you know, although it's still on your website, which I'm not fully understanding, but whatever. That's your business, right? But you're Levi in my book, right? And you you taken yourself and you don't want to be, you know, to have this name that, that's not you. And I, I get that because... It's brought down in the Torah that, you know, the, 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 next to the Neshama, the thing that's closest to it is our names. Mm -hmm. You want to have a holy name attached to your, to your, yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to like a name from like the Christian Bible. So like there's like levels, right? There's like a Jewish name that you can't get away from, like Yehoshua. Mm -hmm. That's a Jewish name. It can be like a little bit Americanized and you can say Joshua, right? But when you like already like take it like to weird levels, like say Jason, there's nothing Jewish about Jason. That's a Goyesha name. It's got no mucker. It's got no source in Torah. That's not a name we want to go by. So when a rabbi calls himself Jason, Rabbi Jason, Rabbi Marvin, Rabbi Murray, or worse, Rabbi Barbara, Rabbi Angela, I'm going to dismiss everything they say because they don't even understand that what they're doing. But how much more so when they run around with the name Mark, which is from the Christian Bible. So it's not even a Jewish name. They have a, Goy a, a Christian name. It's not even a Torah name, it's a Christian name. So I would say, dude, first of all, you've connected your neshama to Christianity, which is a Vodazora. And what are you telling me? You're, you're, now you're questioning the Masorah? 
I'm smelling hair 